Bulginaka, do you know that cybercrime is becoming a growing problem in Fiji? Cybercrime is defined as a crime in which a computer is the object of the crime, such as hacking and spam. Cybercrime is also cyberbullying and using fake profiles to cause panic and spread false news. If you're involved in this or know anyone who's committing these crimes, report them immediately. I'm Polly. And I'm Peter. We host the Traffic Jam Show on City FM. From 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. every weekday. Do, do the, the right, right thing. This bulletin dengue cases on the rise. Police to address traffic congestion and agriculture shipment for Northern Division. From the studios of FBC Suva and Rivenaka, Fiji, an increase in cases of dengue fever has been recorded in the Central and Western Division. The Ministry of Health is conducting laboratory tests for confirmation and is urging Fijians to be alert because cases are more prevalent this time of first time of year because of the rainy season. Critic Kumar reports. The majority of the blood samples sent for testing have come out positive for dengue fever with at least three cases every day. We are seeing positive cases. If the trend continues, then uh, well, there is likely to be an epidemic. Uh, we hope. We hope that we do not, uh, we do not uh, uh, get an epidemic of dengue fever. Dr. Maharaj says there is no evidence of large-scale dengue fever outbreak, but clinics are receiving more cases during these times. The health ministry is carrying out mosquito spraying exercises in certain parts of the central and the western division. Fiji Medical Association President Dr. Basharat Munshi says a surge in dengue fever is expected after tropical cyclones and consistent heavy rain. You know, um, after cyclones and rain, disturbance of uh, water, uh, drinking water systems, etc., you all these uh, types of uh, diseases can go on the rise. And uh, yeah, I, it's not surprising if some people are noticing this. Dengue fever symptoms include fever, joint pains, vomiting and rashes. For those with pre-existing medical conditions, Dengue can be life-threatening. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The police force has reviewed its traffic management operations to reduce conjunction during peak hours. Kritika Pratap reports while police presence on major road conjunctions and traffic lights will remain, the force will use drones to improve traffic flow. With the new school term starting on Tuesday, authorities are preparing for bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic in the mornings and afternoons. This year again, uh, we will be looking at uh, the traffic management and see those identified chop points where we can uh, push in officers to ensure there's a free flow of uh, traffic. ACP Khan says they will rely on technology to assist officers deployed to bottlenecks in the road network. We'll be looking at uh, deploying our drones as well, uh, depending on the weather conditions that we have, to identify the real surveillance, uh, looking at uh, how best we can see deploying officers on the ground where there have been side roads that have been blocked and uh, the chalk points that we need to deploy officers on. Motorists and passengers have often raised concerns on traffic congestion as some spend more than one hour on the road in order to reach their destination. And, uh, you know, uh, during uh, school hours, probably more traffic uh, officers on the road. Police could be out there you know, in, in, this, in this peak period time. Uh, they could control over the, over the pedestrians at the same time you know, and it's, uh, it will really help. From one side that's a good thing and from one side that's uh, not that much good. Police officers will also be stationed outside the schools to ensure students make it safely to their classrooms and back home. These are also often the sites with worse traffic congestions. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. A shipment of agriculture produce was sent to the north by the Agro-Marketing Authority to help Fijians affected by tropical cyclone Yasa. Agriculture Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says this follows the concerns raised by Mombasa market vendors, farmers and suppliers that, will, that the produce was severely affected by the cyclone. Dr. Reddy says they will also allow private sector to supply vegetables to help meet the demands. We want to give time to the private sector to come in and provide vegetables to Lombasa from VT level. If we see that they're not coming, then we will enter and our government through agro-marketing authority and we'll make three trips per week. We'll make three trips per week so that we uh, ensure that the people in Wanwalewu, in Lambasa in particular, are able to have uh, adequate and, uh, supply of fresh produce. Small businesses that were ravaged by a fire at the flower market in Suva last year 
have come out stronger. These emerging entrepreneurs have found space at the Devo on the Park building, juggling to put food on the table and prepare their children for school. Most of them have taken loans from the government. Given the slow economy, they are having to be thrifty and while also thinking outside the box. We are managing to sell some products door to door, but it's hard to go to the villages to sell it door to door because the Turangani Koro sometimes they don't allow us to go in. Uh, we normally go down to Nosori villages, we go to Thailavu villages, and the first is the Navua villages we went. My niece and my children, um, they've been my great helper. I couldn't be here without them. Fijians living in the greater Suva area claim they have been facing water cuts since November last year. Residents of Sakoda, Tadiroa and Samambula have told FBC News that despite lodging complaints and grievances with the Water Authority of Fiji, no action has been taken. Sakoda resident Jack Ram says that thousands of affected are losing faith in WEF. He adds they have been experiencing this issue since November last year. We have been experiencing this issue for past five months. This mostly happens at night. Most working people who knock off late are unable to take their showers. Tisiasa, from that side, uh, from that time we are feeling that this kind of difficulty yeah, for the water. When the truck, when the truck comes for the morning here, yeah, just only one thing they feel on, feel on, on top here. Yeah, the rest here yeah, down, all the people don't have the water here. Yeah. Up ahead, still chance for archers to qualify for Olympics and young female boxer on the rise. We are now on the new new NBC Animataka. Merci sunga da kena loma di na kilo mikro. Sa kena ngau na mita robi na na boxer ngai kapa la loma ta kena ngani. Dalam ina oya o meliki. Bulre oya o Samuel Samuel. Nama kiki rau ena be mataka. Oni ti kina pagrombuka. Ni wai ti ni kali mana mini ti me ona kina ti ni nakaloko. Ena radio Fiji One nando mo ibiti. Ina wina na mataka dan ramai na singabo. Welcome back. Local archers who will need to maintain their top rankings in the Oshini region to guarantee their sport in the Tokyo Olympic Games. The two quarter sports that were up for grabs during the now cancelled continental qualifying event has been given back to world archery. President George Fong says the governing body will allocate the sports to only the two top ranked archers in Oceania. At the moment, the rankings are fixed because there haven't been any international competitions. Um, since last year. So the main focus now is getting our athletes to reach the minimum qualifying scores to reach uh, the Olympics. Super football coach Bob Skan says former Rewa defender Gabriel Matani Singer is equally talented as Seiru Sinalaumbu. The capital side has just recruited Matani Singer through the preseason transfer window but is also on the brink of losing its top striker Seiru Sinalaumbu. Khan says they are aware of the growing interest from other districts to enlist Nalahumbu, and he adds it is not about the individual but about the team's backing as well. If Nalahumbu leaves Suva, Khan says Matani Singer will be the suitable replacement. Everybody, everybody will want to have uh, Sairusi, you know, he's the wonder boy, he scored the highest goals uh, last year, you know, everybody will love to have him in the team. But then it's not about Cyrus, it's about the team, you know, you've got to have the players backing him, it's not about him only. Uh, he's a plus, you know, he can finish, that's a good thing. But then Gaby is equally good as him too. Table tennis enthusiasts ended a three days training program at the FMF Gymnasium in, in, today, in Super today. The program is a warm-up to the Fiji Open, which starts tomorrow. Aquila Vama has more. Starting the new year with a kids program has been quite successful for Fiji Table Tennis. From the 30 or so we've started on Tuesday, we've ended up with about 60. Most of these participants will be part of the Fiji Open from today. It's also the first time that no overseas participant will be part of the Fiji Open. With the pandemic, I mean, of course, there's a lot of restrictions. So um, it's the first time we're seeing that... Um, we just have only local players playing. 
The 2020 Fiji Open will be held at this same venue over the next three days. Aquila Vama, FBC Sports. Up and coming female boxer Hatham Balena Ngasau wants to stamp her mark in amateur boxing. Balena Ngasau believes there is room for more female boxers and is hoping others will follow her lead. The 15 year old has been praised for her skills at a very young age and she is part of the Boxing Kids program that conducted yesterday. Balena Ngasau is the daughter of former light welterweight boxer Michael Balena Ngasau. I feel like Fiji needs more. Uh, female boxers and that uh, I hope to um, reach a national level. Mental fitness is the last component that Cricket Fiji will want to get right before the selection for the national squad. As they look forward to the new season, Cricket Fiji is impressed with the talent that's been showcased over the previous tournaments. Chief Executive Alex Conrote says they've set a timeline to select the, the final squad which they hope to achieve by April. It's looking good, especially for the men. They, uh, for T20, we have a very good batting lineup. Uh, it just comes down to the mental game. So we're looking forward to working on all aspects of their game come uh, next week when they start. A trough of low pressure lies towards the southwest of the group. Associated cloud and showers expected to affect the southern west, western parts of the country. That's FBC Morning News. Join us at 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For news you can trust, get the facts from the FBC's TV, radio and digital news at fbcnews.com.fg. Take care and good morning. हमारे खूबसूरत देश फिजी में चाइल्ड अब्यूज की घटनाएं आए दिन बढ़ रही हैं। क्यों बच्चों का मासूम बचपन अब्यूज का शिकार हो जाता है अपने बच्चों की सुरक्षा का खास ख्याल रखें। उनसे बातचीत करें उनके दोस्तों के बारे में जानें। आज के बच्चे देश का भविष्य है मैं दीप्ति और मैं मोनिश आपके हम सफर शामिल हो जाए हमारे साथ मंडे टू फ्राइडे फाइव फोर्टी फाइव तक रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन आरोप